this is my fiber ONT from my internet provider, Fidium Fiber, out of a 10 gig port, down to 10 gig in on my TP-Link Omada router, out 10 gig on another port, into 10 gig on my uh, Jetstream TP-Link switch, out of another 10 gig, uh, two times, up to two 10 gig switches upstairs, one at my TV, which controls the EAP 690 HD, and one that runs up to my office that has a few computers running 2.5 gig ethernet cards off of that. And I have a third one gig switch up in my bedroom that just powers an Apple TV and uh, another device. This is my 10 gig ethernet switch from TP Lang Omada. And this is the EAP 690 and an iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I'm just gonna do a speed test in the same room right next to it. I have a two gig fiber internet connection up and down from Fidium. Depends on the time of day, sometimes it's saturated. I can normally get 50 and 50 up and down. This is a speed test of the EAP 690 HD to my iPhone 15 Pro Max from one room away. This is a speed test from my Alienware R15 to the EAP 690 HD from one room away using Wi-Fi 6 Intel killer chip. This is the hardware I currently have on my network prior to me swapping out the EAP 690 HD with the EAP 783 and the firmware versions it's running, which are all current as of today. Hey everyone, just got the new EAP 783 access point in the mail from TP-Link Omada. Um, I was hoping to try out Wi-Fi 7. One of the advantages of this access point is, is that it has two 10 gigabit ports. I'm hoping I can set that up in a lag to my TP-Link Omada 10 gig switch. Um, this is the EAP 690, which I'm replacing it with. Pretty bulky unit. So hopefully this one is a little bit smaller. Just taking off the shrink wrap off camera. So definitely smaller. You can see it's a uh, decent size thinner, putting them side by side. It's a lot lighter too. The dual 10 gig ports, one PoE and one for the lag. And standard booklets and presumably the mounting bracket, which I won't use. All right, let's get it hooked up. Okay, let's get this hooked up. I'm gonna plug the primary cable into the PoE port and the secondary cable for the lag into the secondary port. Looks like it's got power from the switch. Gonna go check the Omada controller on my computer while that boots up. Okay, just checking out my Omada controller. Looks like it sees the new access point. It needs to be adopted because it's listed as pending. So I'll go ahead and click adopt. Okay, it's connected, I'll click on it. I'm gonna give it a logical name. Okay, we're gonna check for new firmware.
Okay, it sees that there's a new firmware for the access point. Go ahead and upgrade. That can take a few minutes, so I'll be right back. Okay, the firmware is done updating, so we're going to go ahead and set up the lag between the access point and the switch it's connected to. First, you want to select the access point, go to configure, go down to advanced, and you want to enable the trunk settings. Make sure it's set to SRC Mac plus DST Mac and apply that change. Next, we're going to click on the switch it's connected to, click on ports. Edit port 1, which is the first port it's connected to. Override the profiles. Select aggregation. I'm going to select port 2, which is the second port in the lag. Give it an ID. Set it to static lag and apply. That creates the lag between ports 1 and 2 to the access point. And we're going to make sure we can still ping it. It looks like it dropped for a second. Wait for it to come back. Okay, it's reconnected using the lag and if we check the uplink though it still shows 10,000 I was hoping that it would say 20,000 but there you go it's set up now I'll do some speed tests all right this is going to be a speed test from the EAP 783 to my PC which is one room over which runs an Intel killer Wi-Fi 6C chip Seems like the speeds are pretty comparable to when it was connected to the EAP 690. And just to confirm, I, stu I do have the settings for the 6 gigahertz network, similar to what they were in the 690. Uh, channel 37, high power, the only difference is it's 320 megahertz. But the Intel card only supports 160, so that shouldn't have made much of a difference. All right, this is going to be a speed test between the EAP783 and my iPhone 15 Pro Max right next to it. All right, this is going to be a speed test between the EAP783 and my iPhone 15 Pro Max, one room away. This is going to be a speed test between the EAP783 and my desktop system. I've just swapped out the Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6E chip with an Intel Killer Wi-Fi 7 BE200 chip. It's capable of doing 320 megahertz, and that's the same channel width I've got set on the EAP783. I don't have the dev build of Windows 11 installed. This is just the latest retail version. So I do not have access to the MLO feature, which would combine the 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz networks for super speed. So this is just a speed test of Wi-Fi 7 on a single 6 gigahertz band. So not a true test, but just to see if it's better than Wi-Fi 6E. Well, it definitely seems faster than the Wi-Fi 6E, I guess to no one's surprise. All 
that almost rivals my wired connection, which I'll do a speed test on. Let's try another server just to see if it makes a difference. just for fun. All right, I realized that the speed test was off screen when I just recorded it. So just for fun, we're gonna disable the Wi-Fi 7 and enable the ethernet, which is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection back to a 10 gig switch. And from there it's 10 gig all the way back to my fiber ONT. And we're gonna see what that gives us versus the Wi-Fi 7 speed test you just saw. The best I've seen is 2100 up and down, so I guess it depends on the time of day. Because right now you'd definitely say that the download speed was the same as Wi-Fi 7, which is pretty impressive. Uploads are definitely better on the Ethernet. All right, well, I'm definitely impressed with the EAP783, and I can't wait to get Windows 1124H2 so I can try out the MLO feature. Thanks, everyone.